Welcome to this special install video where we are going to be working with Windows 7 and we're going to be installing Python 3.5. And to install Python 3.5, we're going to be using Anaconda, which is going to help us simplify the process, plus gives us some more tools to work with, like our trusty Jupyter Notebook, which is the main goal that we'd like to get to in this video. So before we start, let me just show you exactly the system specs that I have on this Windows 7 machine. In case you have a problem on your own, it might be good to just compare. So we're looking at 7.5 gigs of memory, we have the 64-bit OS, and yada, 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 yada. So we're going to go to Google, and we're going to type in Python. Now, if we didn't want to use Anaconda, this would be our link. But we do. So let me just bring this up so you can see it, but I'm only going to open it up in a new browser because we are actually looking for Anaconda package. Okay, so we're going to want to download Anaconda for Windows. And when we do, we're going to see that we have either the 64-bit installer or the 32-bit. Make sure to get the one that fits your machine. I'm on 64-bit. And then go ahead and save the file. Oh, you want my email, huh? Not today, but I do support your project. Okay, so it looks like our download is complete. So we're going to head and open up our file system here and go to our downloads folder where we can find our Anaconda download. Let's go ahead and just double click this. Should bring up a graphic installer we can use. Go ahead and run. I give it permission, even though it's going to go deep into the darkness of my computer. Next, make sure to read every word of this. Not. Wait, actually, I probably shouldn't recommend that. Yeah, really read it all, but I'm not going to today. That sounds boring. Just me or all users. So I'm going to put this in just for me. I think it makes more sense to just keep it on a user account level. There's really no need to go all the way into the system. Okay, so starting from the hard drive, let's just get a little bit of an intuition for where Anaconda is installing. Now, we are doing it on the user level, not all the way into the admin level. So we're in users, then Dylan Jorgensen 2, which is the name of my computer. App data, local, continuum, Anaconda 3. All right, sounds good. Find a place for me. I have enough place required, not a problem. I have plenty of space. Okay, so I would recommend keeping both of these checked the same way they do. Uh, this is important because when you set your path environment variable, we're going to be able to work with terminal and find it much easier. It's going to make an automatic link. I find that way more convenient than trying to hunt it down every time. And then also registering Anaconda as the default Python 3.4, it's saying is going to help with PyCharm, my favorite IDE, and some of the other things. So let's go ahead and keep it, no reason not to, and then move on to install. Next, thank you for installing. Learn more about Anaconda Cloud? Yeah, why not? What more do you have to teach me? You know, even as the instructor, there's more I can learn. No, nope, nothing here. I'm done. What we want to do is launch a Jupyter Notebook by going to Run and then typing in Jupyter Notebook. And then we just wait. Boom, we're there. OK, so you'll see that it's localhost colon 8888. But the cool thing is here we are in our home folder. And we're up and running. So we can go ahead and create a new Python notebook. And this is going to be our interface. So we've now created this new untitled notebook here. We can go ahead and give it a title of party. It's very important to name your notebooks in a way that make you party. We can simply print our hello dog statement. Oops. Boom. There you go. Print hello dog. We are up and running. Cool, so we're basically done with this video, but I'm going to take it one step further because all of the code that you're going to see throughout this entire tutorial series is available on my GitHub. So go over here to Repositories and then click on Marshmallow. Obviously, that's, that's what it's called. And you can come up here, Clone or Download, Download Zip. Okay, we will save file and we will put it on the desktop. I think the download has finished. There it is. Let's go ahead and unzip it, and we see the entire Marshmallow Master folder. So let's go ahead and just drag this onto the desktop so it's easy to find. And then we can actually go back over here and just go to our desktop, which we see right there, wherever in your computer these things are. And then we can click on Marshmallow Master, 
and we can go to chapter one, setup one, and let's look at this Python notebook. Wow, pretty amazing. There we are, up and running, and guess what? Unlike before, where you could have actually viewed this and you know seen it or clicked on the links, it's actually interactive. So we can go ahead and edit it. Hello, dog. And the cool thing about this is in future segments, like let's just jump ahead to, heck, let's just, let's just do it. Chapter three, mutability. Let's look at some variables. Don't cheat like this. This is just to show you that the notebook works. Check this out. Executed. Oh yeah, that's meant to teach you about an error, okay? <laughs> you should forget that part. But look, boom, executed. And we can print the ID. We can print the value. So basically, the cool thing here is you can go ahead and experiment with it. Say, like, you don't want to see that error anymore. Well, then go ahead and give it a string. I am string. Look, error gone. Now it even has a new ID. And it prints out something different. So that's the fun part about it, is that when you're following along with me throughout this tutorial series, you should be having your notebook open. And whether you're doing it on the cloud or the Mac or on Windows, have it up so you can pause that video and experiment. See if you can get these things to work the way you think they're going to work. And luckily, everything is contained in these cool little codes. But we're going to learn more about that. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.